I'm Nadim Sadek, um, and there begins the story, really. I'm half Irish, half Egyptian, and uh, I'm, I'm a pre-global, global kid. My father worked for the World Health Organization in areas of great disease, so I spent most of my childhood wandering around between cholera, smallpox, and yellow fever epidemics. Um, and I might be the most vaccinated person on earth, which probably accounts for uh, the lack of coherence in my mind. But anyway, um, I, I grew up in a kind of multicultural way, and it led to an interest in psychology and uh, cultural psychology, I suppose, which I studied at Trinity College in Dublin. And that then led to me becoming involved in qualitative market research, which I felt was a kind of commercial application of an insight into people and tribes and culture. Um, in the 90s, I began a market research business called Sadek Weinberg Research, which um, beautifully became the biggest of its type in the world, um, and um, we sold it to WPP. That led to me being asked to be the global leader of Millwood Brown's qualitative network globally, which was um, a lot of fun. Um, when I left that role, I was asked to help to run Research International, which was a quantitative business as well as a qualitative one, but I was particularly um, invested in trying to make its quantitative frameworks um, even better. And that was a great insight into the, the world of numbers. My father, having been a statistician, I'm an epidemiologist, a word I can barely say, um, it was a lovely little circle in my life that I kind of finally came back around to his world of numbers. And um, it's, it's been nice to do that because, of course, now TX, Transgressive X, is a quantitative research business which is based on a psychological understanding of consumers. So it's all finally coming together and my, my life might end well at this rate. Um, along the way, I've become interested in, in other things and um, I'm either completely a butterfly or capable of doing a few things at the same time. One of the great things that I enjoy doing is um, motorbike reviews. Um, because I travel the world quite a lot on business um, and often get parked for a day here or there, I've taken to bringing a bag of cameras with me and reviewing motorcycles wherever I go, which is a lot of fun. So, you know, Bangkok, Jakarta, Barbados, San Francisco, New York, wherever I happen to be, um, I whip out a camera and start filming motorbikes and then put them up on YouTube and people are kind enough to watch them briefly and then um, move on. I also um, manage in the music industry an artist called Shafri and uh, that is very exciting. It's, a, it's a, an exceptionally hard business, um, one that's got the most structural change that I've ever seen. So most of what I've learned working on FMCG or in service businesses or elsewhere, I try to apply to the management of a music brand, but it is tricky. Um, we're having great success. She's doing very well. She's had video of the year last year and um, she's launching an EP at the moment, which is very exciting, at Notting Hill Arts Club. Um, and I have great hopes for her. She's had a number of offers from labels, but in these days, in the music industry, you can go a long way DIYing it, and, and that's what we're doing. Another role that I have is as chairman of a social enterprise called Triangle, which um, helps people who are largely socially excluded or disadvantaged to be um, more able to participate in society through sport, and it's particularly a sporting angle of inclusion that we work on. There, there was a point in my market research career where having had this success with qualitative research and then run a you know, helped to run a couple of quantitative networks that I thought I would actually take a break from it, practice what I preach, um, and invent a brand, create a brand, and then run it and see whether I could actually be sufficiently operational to make a, a success of things. And actually, it was fantastic fun. Um, I had bought an island off the west coast of Ireland a, a number of years previously, which sounds a bizarre thing to do, and was a bizarre thing to do, but it was also a lot of fun. And having done the kind of civil engineering job of putting in sewage and roads and kind of year-long access through the water, um, we then started building a brand based on the authentic reality of, of an island in the Atlantic. Um, and we, we started with hospitality. People came to the island and we learnt from their love of it that it was all about intoxication and an invigoration and inspiration. It was called Inish Turkbeg, so we were quite into it all. 
we then began a food business where, you know, I would say, I've looked every fish that we serve you in the eye before we package it, because we did smoked fish and smoked tuna and, and smoked mackerel and sold it in places like Harvey Nicks and Harrods, which is great fun. It moved on to a music business. We recorded CDs on the island. We had studios. We had great musicians. We'd, we'd actually lark around in the Atlantic on the back of boats uh, with violins and tin whistles and drums uh, with people wondering what on earth was going on out at sea, but it was us playing our music. Um, and we also had art residencies where we'd bring a, a kind of mix of, of talents. So some were installation artists, some were visual artists, some were, were spoken ones. And we'd then have group exhibitions in London and in Dublin. And, you know, that was very meaningful. It was very uh, deeply affecting of me and my family because we, we watched our place become uh, represented in a, in a life form, in an art form, which was really exciting. Um, it finally culminated in a whiskey business, which um, allowed us to kind of crystallize that what our whole offer on Innistrait Beg was about was living life at a tilt. And I'd looked at these kind of glass mooring boys, um, these floats that fishermen used, and we decided to adapt one of those into our bottle shape. So we, we had these hand-blown mooring boy bottles, as we called them. We took sand from the island, which was blown into the, to the glass. We had our barrels on the island, and, and we had a single malt whiskey that did really, really well. Um, and that was a very exciting point in my life as well. The things that I learned from that brand experience along with my experience in both qualitative and quantitative research, have really served to be the foundational DNA of Transgressive X as well. I think there was a time um, during my stewardship of the Inish Tote Beg brand when, when I paused and I thought, actually, this is all coming together. What was coming together was an understanding of the insight industry in retrospect, which you know, I'd taken a break from to, to run this brand. What I saw was that the mixture of philosophical insight, psychological, scientific advance, technological um, innovation, and uh, the ability to share thoughts with equally senior people who had been in CEO roles, CMO roles, insight directors, client companies, could become a fantastic cauldron of DNA from which could spring a truly innovative insight proposition. And, you know, I'm not always popular for saying it, but I find that the insight industry has become rather a moribund one. It's a $30 billion industry globally that has not significantly innovated for a very long time. So that is what we're trying to do.